Today, episode 161 of Typical Chicago Fans, we have Stinkers and Floaters, the TCF Sports Minute, this or that, a new team builder, and to finish things up, we got a TCF not top three of the worst sports cities. Let's roll. Hello and welcome back to Typical Chicago Fans. It is episode 161 brought to you by our incredible sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee. You can find us on Twitter at Typical underscore Chicago. Head to Facebook and Instagram. Give those pages a like. You can find all of our content in video form on YouTube. Typical Chicago fans, hit that red subscribe button while you are there. Wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, wherever you get them, we're there. Subscribe, rate, review, five stars, whatever you could do. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter at BoomyTCF. And, of course, the gentleman that I'm joined with tonight, that is Zach Ezzy. Lilia TCF and Maddie at schools underscore zero one boys were creeping closer and closer to that summer weather hit about mid or low eighties today. It's, it's starting to feel like we're almost there. Yeah. I'm uh, very excited for this weather, even though it's supposed to get a lot hotter this week, which I'm not very excited for. I'm been good with the not having to sweat a bunch. Um, but I guess that just comes with the summer. Hey, you know, it's better than, uh, than freezing, in my opinion, I'd rather I'd rather sweat than than freeze. But I'm the comes with the territory. Ah, I much rather freeze. Cold stuff. I can put layers on for that. Yeah, yeah. Heat sucks. I'm I'm gonna go more into it on uh, sinkers and floaters. But I just got back from uh, San Diego, and the weather there is it's pristine. So. I felt spoiled. I, we got a little taste of it when we got back. It was basically the exact same temperature for a few days, and then it finally ticked up. So I uh, felt a little spoiled. Uh, shout out. Uh, I know Joe lis- is listening to this one. He he uh, he knew we were going to talk about weather. He knew I was going to mention San Diego, so I had to touch it there. So that one was for him. Yeah, it sounds like the perfect weather, perfect place. Um, it'd be hard to go do anything else other than just be outside there. Yeah, I'll I'll get to it here uh, in a few. Well, let's go ahead and jump into it. As always, we've got sinkers and floaters. Uh, my sinker, guys, is, is very simple. It's sleep. Uh, got a one-month-old now at the house, which doesn't feel real. Um, and I'm very, very thankful. He does sleep, like, better than, you know, you hear horror stories all the time of, you know, people whose kids sleep for, like, an hour at a time or, you know, Never sleep. He he does sleep, you know, a decent amount, but it's it feels like back to being in college when I would go to bed. It you know he he doesn't like to go to bed early. That's for sure. Uh, so we usually go to bed at about midnight. He usually falls asleep at about one. We're back up at four, and then he's usually out till about seven after that. So it just the whole changing of the sleep schedule. So um, luckily, I did know that you're used to kind of staying up late. Yeah, well, that's the problem I used to be. And then, like, I obviously, once we knew we were having a kid, I was like, okay, I'm going to try and bank up as much sleep as I can. So I was going to bed at, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, which is pretty early for me, um, and trying to get, you know, between six and eight hours of sleep. And, uh, you know, it's I, I almost spoiled myself a little bit too much there. And I've never been one to, like, sleep in or, you know, super late or anything. But uh, it does feel like being back in college, you know, staying up till 1 a.m. I forgot, you know what that feels like it's been a long time from since uh since i did that on a regular basis but can't complain he's he's healthy and he's enormous so he's like 82nd percentile in weight and 88th in height so we got ourselves a big boy and uh does nothing but eat so can't complain too much yeah boomy said he's never really been a nap kind of guy but he's getting used to it yeah, I, I probably have been averaging about one and a half a week since he's been uh been home so uh I, even then, it's you know an hour here, but you got to get to sleep in where you can, especially on those nights where I think the other night he decided he wasn't going to go to sleep till four a.m. So the day after that, you got to you got to try and get a little bit here and there, but could be a hell of a lot worse. I can't complain too much. At least like watching like TV shows, so you always have something to do. Yeah, I've watched like I said, you know, when he was you know really little, I've watched more sports uh, like live sporting events since he's been here. Um, than I did before because, you know, I always find some random stuff to do at, you know, at 
seven o'clock at night and I'll, you know, tune into a game, but I've watched all these NHL and NBA playoff games, you know, start to finish because we're just hanging out trying to get him to eat or sleep or whatever it is. So there's definitely some positives there. My that was always the thing I could found is you could never plan anything. There was <laughs> yeah, never any you, the, you, uh, you plans would always go out the window. And it's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah, you got to be uh, flexible for sure. That's one thing I'm starting to notice real quick. Yeah. My sinker, unfortunately, does not have uh, really any positives to it. I'll show the video here, um, but it's pretty much just going to be uh, recently two players have um, hit birds. And uh, here's the video. Through the left side, base hit for Brennan on the first pitch he sees. So Cleveland quickly has two on with nobody out. Let's take another look at it. This one actually went by what looked like some sort of deceased animal at shortstop. Maybe not an animal that would be stretching it. Looks like it might be from the rodent family. They just scooped it out. Oh boy. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, you never know. Hope he had good insurance. Zach Gallen was. Um well, he couldn't wait to tell everybody as he made his way back from uh, uh, throwing a, a side session here because he hit a bird. I'm an animal lover, so this hurts me, but in the spirit of Randy Johnson, I think you know where we're going with this. The bird is no longer with us. I know Zach Gallon took some time to recognize that, but he hit it with a curveball midair, mid-flight, and our camera's caught. First off, a bird's not a rodent, is it? I don't think it was. I, did they say it, it might have not been a bird? But what else would be flying like that? I don't think they said it was flying. I think they said it was laying in the outfield and it got Zach, hit. Zach Gallons was a bird. I don't know about the one in uh, the Sox. Either way, animals. We'll say animals. Uh, <laughs> Zach Gallons was definitely a bird. And then yeah. there's also that theory that birds aren't real anyway. So, <laughs> Were they just one uh, of the dumber conspiracy theories. That would is be it? wild. It would make sense, though, because yes, I do have birds is. that run right into my window. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's. They wouldn't fly if they were drones. They wouldn't be flying them into your window. It'd be a waste of resources. But um, ever since Randy Johnson, it's always been something that it always gets big news when a baseball hits a bird, which is not that uncommon. You'd have to think. Randy Johnson yeah, it, still was better than I think. Well, the bird. Like, you can't even draw. You can't even draw it up. Like it was mid pitch, like right from you know the 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 main play angle of a game. Where you're watching it, you know the pitcher cam where right over his shoulder, and the like you said, the the bird just bull fucking explodes. Yeah, it was just it was the stuff of movies. Zach Gallons was very similar to that too, because it was like mid flight. It was like the perfect point of contact that you could get. <laughs> tough week, tough tough week uh, for birds on uh, baseball fields. I saw uh, the Gallon yeah. one. I didn't even see that one until you played it, Zach. That is. Uh, that's tough. That's that's. A t I, I'm also like a little bit surprised that uh, like the bird thing doesn't happen more often mid-flight. Like I just feel like birds are everywhere. Remember a few years ago there was like a bee attack, and then like there was one year in the playoffs. I think there was like uh, like it was like cicadas or like big like yeah. horse flies or something like that. that it was. I remember the like. bee one, but wasn't there one? It was an Indians. Uh, Yankees game, and yes. it was like the midge is, I think they're called the, those yes, little the mad midges. Feet. That's yeah. right, yes, like and like bug and animal takeovers at baseball field. Ugh. If I remember right, it was like uh, Jabba Chamberlain was just like yeah. covered yeah, in his that little that tiny derailed bug. his career, they say. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what did it. Him not being able to find the strike zone had nothing to do with it. But no, those are that, that's a wild week. Uh, good, video good callback there, back. too, by the way. I can't believe that came out of nowhere. I don't know where I dug that one up. All stemming from birds and uh, rodents' untimely death on a baseball field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My uh, sinker is um, traveling specifically through airports, specifically even more specifically on Southwest Airlines because it's starting to just become an absolute joke. 
like flying anywhere. Like people in the airport, people in the fucking planes. It's like there's so many times you just get just completely annoyed with with the behavior and just the way other people carry themselves at uh, at the airport. And it's just infuriating at times. I don't know, man. Nowadays, everyone's ready to pull the phone out and dude. Well, the, you start getting the crazies on the plane, yeah. Mean. Yeah, you get the craze on the plane, but then it's like just even down to like you're sitting on the plane and the, you know, you land, everybody stands up. It's like, where the fuck are you going, dude? Yeah. All you're doing is just making it harder for everybody else to get their fucking bags out of the overhead things and making it harder for everybody else to get off the fucking plane because you're just, you got you to gotta stand up for what fucking reason? Wi Fi wasn't working. You pay eight dollars, it's useless. At least the Southwest gave us a free cocktail. At least I think they feel bad for you when you travel with a kid, so they give you your first round for free. I believe it's the second mm-hmm. time or third time that's happened now. So, so they shout out to the uh, so shout out to the flight attendant to Southwest. They were great, but outside of that, you know, it's like just the experience at the airport. Just it's it's horrific. It sucks. Well, and the problem is, is like you're traveling, obviously. So like everybody's a little bit on edge. And then yeah, there's in. always built in like tension and anxiety yeah. with it or whatever. And like, especially when you're like with your family, if you're just like traveling by yourself for work for whatever, go, you know, just on your own for whatever reason, like it's it's no, way less stressful. Like, but when you got your kid, right. your wife, you got suitcases, you got this bag, you got that bag, we got fucking snacks. Do we got the PB and J? Do we got like what what it's gonna happen here? You know, like it's just it feels like you're just like preparing for the you know end of times yeah that's we had an issue i think it was about this time last year when we went to denver and we sat on like the runway uh because there was they said it was too windy but we watched like spirit airlines send like six <laughs> well, planes out yeah, spirit I mean, did not care but delta was like yeah we're gonna we're gonna wait this delta's one out. got a I better mean, insurance policy <laughs> yeah i guess so and they were just like, yeah, screw it. We're just, spirit was just zipping planes up in the air. But then you sit there, they're like, oh, it'll be a half hour. And then two and a half hours late. You can, even if like you're as chill as a cucumber and like we were, it doesn't we matter. Were half hour you late can late leaving. We were a half hour late leaving because the stewardess was running late. Like one of the <laughs> flight attendants. <laughs> Leave her behind. They made the announcement like the flight attendant is here at the airport, but uh, she's not at the gate yet. So we have to, to hold off boarding. And everybody, you could see her. She had to walk past us all. Oh, so like, <laughs> I'd go total home. walk of shame. I'm done. I and you could, she just puts her head down and fucking beelines. If, if I would have got or got gotten her. near it, you could definitely if I'd got near it. And they said that, that the pilot already told everybody that it was me running late. I would just quit. I'm not walking yeah, through right. that point. Just, here's my two weeks notice early. Yeah, here's my two minute notice. See you later. Um, On to a positive note, floaters, uh, mine is summer vacation. Most of you know that uh, I'm a teacher, and this is like the second latest I think uh, we've had to go into the school year. Uh, we got two weeks left, so there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So um, things are starting to slow down, and, you know, it's still like I've been teaching now. This is my ninth year. I'm almost year 10. And, like, it still feels like the same way it did when we were, like, in junior high where, like, we know summer yeah. break is around the corner. And it obviously – That's great. That's great. Obviously, summer vacation yeah, is going to look a lot different really, this uh, year. But I'm very happy for I you. I feel for you, buddy. Yeah. You get three months off. I really feel yeah. for you. Uh, I think we got, like, two and a half months oh. this year. Uh, that's a damn shame. It's a little shorter this year. So, uh, just excited. Just – you feel the – Yeah, keep it in your pants, all right? Yeah. I'll uh, I'll make sure to to send the group uh, as many text messages as I can from the golf. I'm still working on how to get the uh, baby seat in the golf cart. So if anybody's got any tips or tricks out there, bungee cords. If you can feel my excitement coming through the computer, you could you'd really feel it. Well, man, cords, you guys you gotta are a bunch a of little, downers. You gotta leave a little give. Yeah, you I'm, gotta I'm like shake a little bit. You're yeah, you're right. you're yeah you're excited about your two and a half months off, and we don't. Yeah. What are we supposed to be excited about? Oh, uh, I was excited that Matt got to go to San Diego. For five days, thanks. Yeah. So, listen, we're not talking about we're not you know nitpicking duration here. All right. I uh, am. We are. You guys yeah. are a bunch of negative sure. Nancys. Well, my floater is very positive. It's Michael Block. Uh, it was pretty cool yesterday. Um, it is one of those things, and maybe it's a little bit over overblown or whatever because I mean he is a professional golfer, 
So it's not like it's crazy that he got tied for 15th. I don't think it's that crazy. Yeah, it's not like, like it's me going out there no. hacking my way from 100. All it's not like they like just had um, some just like random, uh, like zero handicap. Like he's a professional golfer. Um, and, it, but it was cool though, just to see like him. He gets to play with Rory and then the hole in one and then the, the putt at the end. Um, and they're giving him, uh, I think he's going to the Charles Schwab next weekend. And then there's one other one that he got uh, invited to. And it's one of those things, though, like, it's cool. But, like, his life was awesome before this. Yeah. The, any golf pro at, like, a nice golf course is just th the coolest job. He pretty much says he goes do some paperwork or does some paperwork. Then he does some lessons, does some more paperwork, does some lessons. Then his family comes out at, like, 430 every day. He gives his kids some lessons, helps him out with golf. It's like you lived the life already. But yeah. I never even knew these were a real thing. I didn't realize that not every player at a major is or at a tournament isn't like just all tour carded people. It's all hit or miss. It's only like certain tournaments. There's 20 people that were – he was one of 20 that were whatever this exemption in. Well, then you get like the U.S. Open where people can qualify. The qualifiers, uh, like you could be like a Joe Schmo off the street. You know, P. Goy is going to stumble his way into an open qualifier here soon. <laughs> well, um, uh, what was it? Danny Woodhead almost. Uh, yeah, that was the U.S. US Open. Open. I think Romo got pretty far too. Yeah. But it's just cool to see uh, somebody that, I mean, as close to our golf game as it would be like he's not a professional, but he, he is a professional. Uh, I even saw he was like 2022 or 21 player of the like PGA player of the year or whatever. I'm guessing like in that because he's still he's been in plenty of other tournaments. It's not his he played, first tournament. He played D1 golf, too. It's not like he's like. But also, you got to love the stats. It's like he beat John Rahm by five strokes. He beat Justin Thomas by 10 strokes. It's like, all right. Well, then the hole in one was pretty sweet, too. Yeah, that was incredible. I've never seen a hole in one in a professional game that was just like perfectly dunked in. Yeah, they, that's what like I kept watching a video because there was no roll or bounce or nothing. It was just slam dunk. That was it was cool. It was it, like you said. There's definitely like nuances to it, but it's it still was, it was not almost not too much, but like it was a lot. I mean, there almost was more coverage of that than there was Brooks winning. Yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. That's uh, also something crazy for golf. The first live player to win a major. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, I forgot that he was the first one. I thought they had another one for some I reason. Agree. I think he hit, Brooks has more major wins than he does PGA Tour tournament wins. Yeah, like I think they said in part of my was five and four. So this guy, he went to live. Did what he wants to do in the random events, making hundreds of millions of dollars, and then still comes back and wins a major. Big bounce back for Brooks. And then big time. I know I'm going a little long here, but did you see Brandel, you know, Brandel Shamby. Sham, he's the he does Shambly. like the, yeah. He does like the announcing for golf. Yeah. Couldn't believe that you would have you would think of uh Brooks Kepka being on the a Ryder Cup team. Yeah, that, that was stupid. Game. Do we want to win? We want to win. <laughs> exactly. That's a country thing, not a PGA versus yeah, Liberty. the PGA Ryder Cup. So. It's my take on it. I agree. It's ridiculous. That guy's a joke. Um, my, uh, my floater is City of San Diego. Holy cow. What a beauty. Uh, that was a fun, fun vacation, fun little trip. Um. Plenty to see, plenty more to go back and see. So, How long of a flight is that? It was about four, right at four oh, hours. So it's long enough that it's like, all right, I'm ready to get the hell off, but not like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it's not like you're destroyed. Yeah, we got to see uh, see him play against the Royals. Saw Waka take a no-hitter into the eighth. Fucking, of course. Michael oh, Waka. wow. I didn't realize you were at um, that one. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Stadium's gorgeous. Um mm -hmm. Went and saw the USS Midway, so this got to geek out there a little, uh, Boomy. 
It's no, yeah, story. that's awesome, man. I forgot. I always forget. Like we were only in San Diego for like maybe a full day, and we did the tour at the stadium. And I think we like drove by where the ship is, but like we didn't, you know, do the whole, you know, ship. The San Diego Zoo like blows Brookfield out of the water. It oh, was yeah. tremendous, like tremendous zoo there. Um, so there's uh, a lot more that we want to go back and see. It was a very fun place. Don't look at real estate prices, though, because if you're one of those people that likes to look at the cost of houses where you're like, traveling or where you're at, holy shit. Yeah. I knew it was obviously crazy, but when you start seeing like 1,000 square foot for a million and a half, it's like, oh, boy. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a nice place to visit. Very nice place to visit. La Jolla is gorgeous, too. Got to see the seals laying on the beach and stuff, so that was pretty sweet. I've been to, I want to say like 42 or 43 states in my life. And obviously like all the big towns for, you know, baseball stadiums. San Diego is always, ever since we we stopped there, has always been in my top three. And I just regret that we didn't get to spend more than a day there. Because like, I always feel like. I would put it number two on my list of U.S. cities. Behind Charleston, South Carolina. Yes, correct. That's numero uno. That you think Charleston's better than San Diego? Uh, the weather, the weather for San Diego is is tenfold better, in my opinion, because like in in Charleston, it's so freaking hot in the summer, it's yeah, so humid. Um, but I love the like just the appeal and the charm. It's a smaller city too; it's way smaller than San Diego. Older, so, old. It's very old. Um, it's got a lot of you know. A lot of history to it, um, mm-hmm. a lot of good and bad history to it. Um, San Diego, though, is two – they're polar opposites from the from the food end of spectrum, but they're both dynamic um, right. food cities as well, like restaurants galore. I had more, like, good tacos in, in San Diego than – it's like it, nothing even remotely compares here now. Like, after having, like – we went to a couple, like, just straight, like, authentic, you know – just across the border, Mexican restaurants for yep. uh, some carry out tacos and shit, dude. They're so good. Like, it was Your just, favorite it was local taco taco joint just feels so inadequate now. Yeah, it's, you know? they're they're very very good around here too. But it's like it was a different level. It was crazy. Oh, perfect. beautiful city. Um, did tons to do. Families, no families, whatever you got. And we stayed at a hotel. My wife had a conference there. We stayed at a hotel. There was a uh, Marilyn Monroe stayed there at one point, so that was pretty sweet. Saw so, like. Saw Lambos, McLarens, uh, Ferraris, all sorts of these cars going cool. over there. It was wild. It was just a parade of nice cars. Did you at least get to see some like, you know, big like fire trucks or big engines that for the kid? I know he likes oh, all he that. Was, kind of stuff. Yeah, we he got to go on a on the train. He got to go on the plane. He got to go on a bus while we were there. We, uh, Mister Transportation, got to do it all. So it was good to go. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Well, let's uh, change gears here. Let's jump into the TCF Sports Minute. We'll get started with the North Siders. The Cubbies sitting at 20 and 26. They're five games out of first place. Uh, if we'd have done this episode about a week ago, probably have a little bit different to say. Two and seven on the most recent road trip. Well, they had a tough road trip. They went to Minnesota, Houston, um, and then Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah definitely three, you know, playoff teams at, at you know at this point but you just at two and seven it doesn't matter you know what you'd like to be a little bit closer to 500 and obviously some things are changing eric hosmer gets released mervis is called up morell is called up and morell is just absolutely eight just, home runs in 11 games just beating the leather off the ball right now it is so fun to watch yeah that's in humans like in humans type stuff right there it's great yeah and the hot and, and, thing is not a big deal because they didn't really owe him much money at all. Um, I think the – who did he play for before? I think the Padres are The still Padres gave him that. the monster deal. Um, I think uh, the Red Sox were paying some of it when they absorbed his deal, I think, at one point. And you just and want I to could the be. younger guys some at-bats. You don't want him – they don't need – like, Mervis doesn't need um, – needs more at-bats than – Hosmer like we don't yeah. need unfortunately Hosmer just didn't work out it was kind of one of those things uh, to start the season to see if he can really play anymore and then unfortunately I don't think he can I don't know if he'll go somewhere else or if he'll just take all that money and just go retire yeah I mean he's right now he's what 30 
something. I don't even know. I got it pulled up here. I'm, or pulling it doesn't it up matter. Here. It's over at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was batting. Let's see. He was batting 234. I mean, two home runs. I mean, it's it, it's just a very average, mediocre veteran. And when you got a guy that you Good know you're career. hoping is yeah, Good career yeah, World I mean, Series a, champ. Have have fun. Enjoy your time. Thirty three years old. Made a lot of money. Er, yes, he did. And a lot of dough. Yes, he did. Um, obviously, you know things. You know, progressing this way, it, you weren't. I mean, Bellinger is. I know he's on. He's injured right now, but. When you look at you know some of these older veteran signings, I, I like that they were willing to cut the cord with Hosmer early because it feels like in the past they would have just kept this guy around for the sake of keeping him around. And um, you know, where when you have guys like Mervis and Morell that need the at bats, like you don't need to keep a guy like this. This does feel like a little bit of a change in you know from where the rebuild was even a year ago. So um, you know, we'll we'll see. I mean, I, I really. I think this Cubs team is going to stick around this. I don't think they're going to, you know. They got I, really... open. I don't understand what's going on. Why did they take Keegan Thompson, take him down, and then not bring another reliever up? What are we yeah. doing here? We got one guy who I understand he needs to go down to the minors, but we didn't get any better, and we just took a guy away. Yeah. I mean, Fulmer, I mean, come on. I, mean, I think that's going to be the next one to go. I mean, what? he's not good. And this offense needs to get going too. You can't have a a, a game that Justin Steele pitches so well the other day, and I think it was Sunday, and then you you only can get one run out of it and a home run at the end. It's like we gotta be we gotta be doing better than that. Yeah, there's definitely holes, and like I think it like for me, like I get you know probably irrationally mad, like especially in that Astros game was that Saturday where they blew the huge lead in the eighth and ninth, like irrationally mad. And then you remember like, well, this team is, is still what it is. You know, they're, I think, I don't think they're a playoff team. I don't think they're a wild card team, but like, you just want to keep seeing guys like Mervis and Morrell getting called up and, you know, figuring that kind of stuff out. And you wonder, Amaya got called up a couple weeks ago. Um, and then obviously you look a little bit farther down and you've got guys uh, like Brennan Davis and uh, who's at AAA and obviously P P Crow Armstrong's at double A. Like, do you, you know, once this team has realized that the playoffs are not gotta, in the picture, when do you start calling these guys? We got to get past the master bony and the yeah. Barnhart. Like we can't, that, we need to get some of these younger guys up here. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I'd almost rather just suffer and be bad with, uh, Miguel Amaya at catcher, Morell in the lineup, Mervis, you the know, Brennan is, Davis. Like, let's just stuck and figure it out. Which just makes no that, sense. Just got to hope that that Cody, who you are, deal, the one that they either got with a Madrigal for uh, um, Kimbrel, that Kimbrel deal. They got mm-hmm. Cody, who's supposed to be a good reliever. He's coming back from Tommy John. He should be back up here anytime in the next couple of weeks, probably. So. Really hope he they hit on him because they need a bullpen arm to step up big time. Definitely, definitely. There's a, I, I feel like in this type of environment where the Cubs are at, I feel like I've been paying so much more attention to the minor league teams in the last year and a half than I did in the previous six years. But um, you know, there are some some really projectable arms, at, especially like Double A and and High A. So you know, you obviously you don't want to fast track and, and make these guys come up when they're not ready. But you start hoping that these guys, you know, start figuring it out and see what happens. But on the other side, uh, find could be another worse. Justin Steele in there somewhere. Yeah, that would, that would help. Uh, the White Sox 19 and 37 games out. I will say they played much better so far here in the month of May than they did in April. I don't know if you could have had a worse month of April, uh, you know, outside of being a member of the Oakland athletics, but, um, 19 and 37 out. I mean, the, the good thing for them and the same thing can be said about the Cubs. They both play in bad divisions. So, I don't same song I, and dance though as Eloy starts hitting well and then he gets hurt again. You know, it's like it's yep. the same old thing. It's like you, you it's nice to see Kopech is starting to maybe, you know, hopefully turn the corner for them. But it's they dug themselves such a hole right off the get go. And you know, if they don't really you gotta play as equally well at, at some long stretch here soon, or else you just you don't dig your out self out of out of a start like that. Right. I think the last time we recorded, I changed the I changed the record on our show notes, and I believe they were like nine and nineteen at one point. Um, 
and now there's you know still sitting at 19 and 30 so you know well, basically played 500 since 500 ball but you did you like can't you said, 500 you ball you start, yeah. you like, start out head under you're fucked you know yeah what's the old say you can't win a division in april but you can certainly lose one and it, right. it like if this continues if you don't start playing over 500 ball then you know you're kind of looking at another wasted season and in, in if you're window. not if you're still what 10 games 15 games under 500 and the trade deadline comes they're going to start selling some guys i mean it's going it, to they're going to start well, how do you rebuild how do you in not... a way because what but i don't know how they're going to do that I mean, Giolito is a prime <laughs> example. He's, a, I believe, he's a free agent after this year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he's he's maybe starting to hopefully turn the corner. It looks like he's been really good at home this year. Um, you know, but he's the kind of type of guy that, like you said, Zach, if you're flirting in that ten game under, eight game under, five hundred range, and July's coming, yeah, you you got to start looking at dumping guys like that, and it's just the way it is. And it feels like the reset button gets hit, so. It's just hate to see it. It's really yeah. sad. It's really, really <laughs> sad. Do like you said, right? though, because at this point, I mean, the Cubs are almost projected at a better percentage to make the playoffs than the White Sox. And yeah. who would have thought that at the beginning of this year? Even if you would have thought, oh, the White Sox are going to start off bad. I mean, who would have thought it would have been this bad? Yeah, I mean, eleven games under five hundred, and you think about it. I mean. As bad as the division's going to be, you're going to have to be around 500 to win it. Yeah, and even if you do, like, it, it, I think it's – like, you you would have to play some insane baseball from here to August to be, you know, in that – but, like, for me to I mean, say – you got to basically uh, this play, like, gonna, oh, 600 baseball the rest of the way. Yeah, and not even that. Like, when you get in the playoffs, are you better than, you know, these other really high-quality teams in, in the American League? No. Like, I, I just don't see it. And, like, then it gets to the point, like, do you start tearing things completely down again? And, you know, because, like, their their farm system is depleted. This is what happens when you go through a rebuild. And there's nothing left. So, you know, do you start shipping out guys that, you know, are on your roster that, hey, maybe we start this, you know, all back again? Like, right now, it, at their best, would you say that it, it, they play their best baseball they possibly can? Are they better than the Tampa Bay Rays? No. Are they better than the Twins? No. And I don't even think the Twins are that good. Orioles. Are they better than the 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 Astros? Who the are, 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 do no. the Orioles? The like you look at a team like the Orioles, and everybody in the AL East is probably everybody in the East is better. For one. yes, then you look at the Orioles, Orioles who are young, and they've got fucking prospects coming out of the ass. Yes, dude, they've got. They've got a just a slew of studs coming up in triple and double A right now. It's wild. That team is going to be very, very, very good. It looks like for a long time. I just it, it, they're in such a bad spot right now, and like you said, Matt, I hate to see it sometimes, but it's really sad. It is. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> sad to see Reinsdorf ruin two fucking teams in the city. Speaking of Jerry Reinsdorf, the Bulls, no first-round pick. That is going to the Orlando Magic, which, looking back now, that trade absolutely sucked. Holy Lumi, cow. That was pretty funny. What happened yeah. to you, though? Because it, it, oh. I mean, it easily could have happened to anybody because <laughs> so the way for, they did it was they they put the pickup as the Orlando Magic. They didn't put the Bulls logo on there. So if you were just watching on mute, you had no idea. So to, if anyone didn't see my tweet, it was, uh, so my son was like screaming his head off, you know, for some reason. So, and I didn't even have the volume turned up very high. I think it was maybe on like a three or four. I could barely hear it. And he's screaming. So I'm just watching the, the cards get flipped and, and, and I see the magic pop up at their, whatever 11 it was, didn't think anything of it. And, you know, we get to the final four and I look at my wife, I said, the bulls are still alive. They haven't flipped the bulls card yet. Like the bulls are still here. And so they go to commercial, they come back, and they show the final four teams sitting there. And I was like, wait a second, what just happened? And I so I started looking at it, I'm like, oh, no, that, that 11th pick, does that was the one that belonged to the Bulls. That's so stupid. NBA, I know you're watching. Well, they Don't do that. put, like, half From Magic, Chicago, half via, Bulls. Yes. via Chicago. Via, via Chicago. Chicago on the card. Yes, I'm not asking for much. I, I felt very dumb for about 10 minutes. Oh. But... I mean that's a dumber than normal was was okay. the proper response there, Matt. Gonna Thanks say, for correcting me there. I mean, yeah, I don't want to limit it to ten minutes here. 
<laughs> well, hey, I'm just taking the, the small victories <laughs> I can get, okay? But there's no small victories when you look at the uh, Vucevic trade. I mean, this... Brutal. <sighs> And like everybody said when it happened, like there's a possibility that, you know, everything they're giving up, you know, Wendell Carter, who's turned into a pretty serviceable big man. Um, and, and then obviously all the picks that went with it. It's just like, what are we doing? Like, it'd be really, and I don't think that like this draft is, is deep. Like, I don't necessarily think you're going to get a super high quality player at the 11th pick right away, but like, but nice to have it. Yeah, it, looking at it now, when you lose in the playoff or the play-in game to a team that's going to go to the NBA Finals, what could and have been? What could have been, and not even like, where do we go now from here? I mean, Lonzo Ball may never step on a basketball court again. Vooch is getting older. Demar's getting older. Zach Levine's getting older and doesn't play any defense. And it just—I I don't know. Where do you go from here? Do you start tearing it down? Do you start? What do you do? You're kind of stuck in basketball purgatory, and it feels like we've been doing this show for five plus years, and I've said this three times. Yeah, well, what do you do? Because really and truthfully, what are you going to get for any of the players that you want to get rid of? Um, Levine's contract is crazy. So Mm -hmm. there's really nothing you can do. Yeah. Back to the drawing board, square one. Back to being the 10th seed, maybe. Yeah, at best. Just, I don't know. This th- That organization is so frustrating, but typical for a Jerry Reinsdorf-led organization. Matt, you got anything on the Bulls? I mean, what's there to say? You guys yeah. pretty much touched on everything that can be touched the on. It's, not, you can't, there, it's basketball purgatory, and it will continue that spiral in, in Chicago. On the positive side, at the Bedard, 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 Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard is a Blackhawk. I saw the Can notes. You believe it? Whatever, whoever typed that question out, whoever just said, "Is he the for sure pick at number one?" It, that was Boomy. That was Zach. What are we? What are we talking about here? Yes, uh, yes. I thought the same thing. Pick. I don't really even know who the second pick is going to be. Santilli. Santilli. He's going to be. A, he's going to be a very good player, but it is. It's not gonna be kind of Bernard. It's not. It's the. This is generational talent. You don't fuck with it. You don't. Rest, you just take it and you just hope for the best. Because I. The it's what they needed. Pick. It's what they needed. How did we end up with Connor Bernard and Justin Fields in this city? Is what I gotta know. And I. I, I don't know. I want to ask. The, you it's guys the to... makings of like. Uh, it's just a tandem. It's a tandem to take over the city right there. The question that uh, they, I think it was on the mid show when they asked, would you trade the number one overall pick no. in the NHL draft for the w- one pick in the NBA draft? And I think we're, the, I'm a thousand percent yes. Wouldn't hesitate. Wait, what? Would you, if if you could basically, like would you them. rather have the Bulls have the number one pick or the Hawks have the number? The one Hawks pick? It, with the players that are up there, dude. I like when Mignogna, he's amazing, but, dude, he's one, like, foot injury away from it being – hey, dude, that is just – I just think that, like, there's so much hype around him, but, dude, Connor Bedard is going to be, like, one of the greatest – could be one of the greatest – But that's the same players. thing. That's the same hype around Bedard that there is around when Mignogna. There is – I agree with you. No, it's the, just the same I, I thing. Wanna... You watch basketball. You don't watch hockey information. If you Yeah, watch, I, I, I agree. That's the guy, basis of it. Then you would know how – like insane this guy is going to be he's 17 years old he'll be 18 i think once he's on the yeah they say as soon as he steps on the ice he's he's got the best wrist shot in the league he can they say he's as soon as he steps foot in the league he's got the best wrist shot in the league is that is a crazy story about how he developed that yes the the way he's got that shot that apparently no one else like patrick kane had the same thing like if you have a young hockey kid like should the, the wrist just be broken? And yeah, just break yeah, their wrist. Start fucking hacking their wrist. Yeah. You know what I mean, like yeah. they say that Kane had the same problem. You know, like I guess Bedard yeah. plays with a longer stick than normal too, so it gives like it, it, they said it he can he a, can like make a a nice shot from like the red line or whatever the blue yeah, line. Yeah, it's it, apparently the kid's got a skill set that is just you know 
revolutionary. Uh, and like they said, he will he will stuff. play game one next year for the Blackhawks. My only yeah. thing, too, and I think Zach hit the nail on the head on that argument between just these two players alone. Now, if we're talking which team would you rather have in any given year. I think that's where my I can, argument I can down. listen to the argument differently. But if it's if it's for this year alone, Dude, a seven six point guard freaks me out in a lot of ways. Like hitching your wagon to a guy what that's structurally the, built the like foot, that. Like the seven. Well, how like, how tall is Chet? Um, uh, it's just seven three. Yeah, and he had he look at Yao Ming. Yao Ming was supposed this. to yeah. be like this, you know, this just freak of it's nature just, that that can move and is big, and it's just there gets to a point your body is just not designed to move like yeah, that when you get to a certain for, size. It's great for um for basketball, but other than that, that's gotta suck to be that tall. Yeah, oh yeah. Anything like, over seven foot that makes life not easy. So and I need to, I mean, is this kid fucking Steph Curry shooting or or no? He, he no. shoots like, a good three pointer, but I, I mean he's not good. I would hope that's not his main job. Right. He's in so the then so then at, at that point you're not you're gonna have to beef him up then too. Oh, like yeah. he's if he's going to be playing against you know, traditional fours and fives in the NBA. He's going to need to put some muscle on here real quick or else he's going to get tossed around like crazy. I think realistic, like what most people want to see out of it, uh, of Weminyama is like more of like a Giannis type player that yeah, can handle can the ball. And, but obviously he's, he weighs a hell of a lot less than Giannis does. Um, yeah, I mean, Giannis was, he put on a lot of weight over the years. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like he was what he is right now from, from a jump. It took him a few For years. Sure. So. Um, so with that being said, Bedard's your number one pick. What are the expectations of the Blackhawks next year? Is this team hopefully gonna, suck they'll, again? They'll be, yeah, they'll be fun to watch, but they're gonna have a lot of young guys come up from like the Ice Hogs mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but uh, like, it's interesting to see here. like a guy like Reichel when when he's playing mm-hmm. with like a, a, a elite level talent like this. It, I, it's guys like that Korchinski on the D that's supposed to be making you know the, the step up next year. Um, it's one. Of, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the young players. I'm really looking for. They've got a good system that they're building. They've got a ton of draft capital, and obviously you got Connor Bedard now too. So it's like you got the the foundation is there to start really building this thing and building it a little bit quicker than maybe you hope. You got a cap space coming out of the ass, and you got to save that for one more year, well, and if yeah. possible, if if the guy makes it, it's Austin Matthews. You they, throw yeah, the fucking Austin Matthews bag at is him. supposed to be a free agent, and then hopefully you can show him if, with if Bedard get, and the younger if, players that this is a good that's, spot to go. That's the jackpot. That's the gold mine. That's the pipe dream is, is pairing Austin Matthews with, with Bedard, and then you've got, you know, you're right back to hunting cups again, and that's that's just, you know, that gets me excited a little bit. It's, it's a really a prove-it year to show hopefully this team – they're not going to be amazing, but by the end of the season can show you that they are trending in the right direction. It's really glad to just see the Hawks finally having a, a superstar to bridge the gap. You know, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been four months. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've had a star. Hey, speaking so. of that, let's get Kane back. I'm, I'm all for it. All right. for it. They got plenty of room to bring him in. You still got that house in Lake Forest or wherever it's at. That's so. right. There you go. Wouldn't wouldn't argue with that, but it will be a, a fun year at least for uh, you know the future of one side of uh, the United Center. So we'll yeah, see what happens that, that in Frankie the Frankie Nazar is supposed to be another guy too, and look to keep an eye out for next year as well. So the, the, like you said, the future's bright. Yeah, a few. Well, like, it's about a few months here is the draft, so then that's another exciting time for the Blackhawks. Well, and like even the uh, I don't know how much you guys follow, but the Rockford Ice Hogs made the playoffs again this year. Um, and obviously, a lot of their talent was up with with the NHL team. Now, hey, now looking back, it doesn't matter. Now they the had to. Like, that's the way they had to get there. Unless the envelope really was cold. Then when they the when they beat the we'll Penguins, and it was like, what are we doing here? Exactly. We will take it. Uh, before we move on, we got a big shout out to our sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee, the best coffee in the game. They work with our guy, Dom Frederick and Ian Hab, so you know it's good quality stuff. Lots of new stuff coming from old Connect Roasters. Little storefront action, maybe some canned action I saw on Twitter today. Cold brew. Yeah, so big stuff coming. 
Big stuff coming from our guys over uh, in Bourbon A. So make sure that you head over to connectroasters.com. They're on Twitter at Connect Roasters. Make sure you give them a follow. Head to their website. You know you need your caffeine in the morning, so place your order. We promise you will not be disappointed. Zach, we got to make a trip back out there. It's been uh, over a year since we've been to Old Bourbon A. Yeah, you've had you've had a busy uh, few months. Yeah, here, that's so. true. Yeah, that's fair. But connectroasters.com. Uh, make sure you head on over there. Get yourself stocked up on some amazing quality coffee. I am one thousand percent team cold brew. Love cold brew coffee. Oh, I love a so cold brew. My wife is very excited if these canned things become an option. Because we're really... like twelve months out of the year, cold, <laughs> hot. I don't care. Fair enough. So a big shout out to our sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee. Let's move on, boys. We got a new set of this or that. I will give you a couple hypotheticals here. Explain, and then you can give me your answer. So we're going to go with if you could be a pro athlete. The pay doesn't matter here, okay? So I want to make sure you know that. Like, the pay is going to be all the same. Would you rather be a professional baseball player or a professional basketball player? I'm going basketball. Any, any reason? So many games. Yeah. That's a big one. Basketball. I could live like a teacher and have my summers off. <laughs> hey, and also, I, I can't remember who it was. There's one of the guys in the – I think he's in the NBA – was like a really good uh, – either a baseball or a football player, and they asked him why he chose basketball, and he said air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. true. It's legit. So – I think I think you I would go you basketball to, as you well. To but freeze your ass off at the beginning of the season, and then be hot as shit at the end, and then or in the middle, and then cold again at the end of the season. Yeah, I, I, I and like you said, the length of the season. I love baseball, but I love basketball just a little well, bit. What more. I would that, say is hitting a home run has to be like one of the coolest feelings. Yeah, I agree, yeah, Maddie. What are you act like throwing down a dunk wouldn't be sick too? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Like dunking over like some just, dude. That's a she's gotta hit a ball so far to hit a home run. <laughs> Either way, I think you're getting some kind of like vibe where it's like uh, I'd love to be ball. Yeah. Which one um, are you taking, Maddie? I took basketball. Summer's all right. Over. Three basketball. That's right. That's right. Uh football or hockey? Football. I don't know if I could take a hit like that. I yeah. mean, I guess you're taking a hit. I was gonna say oh, hits are yeah, but football, you're only doing it over 17 weeks, not over 82 nights. I don't think I'm tough enough to get like 40 stitches and then come back and play. I'm going to take football there. 17 week season. I will Again. be, I'll, I'll be different here. I I've said it a million times. Like I like football, but I, I also like, I just, I think I like the idea of being a professional. I feel like hockey's just cooler sometimes. Like the ability to skate and handle a puck. Sometimes. Totally agree. Cooler. I think it's way more physical too. And I think yeah, that's that works. The, the beating over eight, the beating over eighty-two nights versus the beating over seventeen weeks. That's why I'm taking football. That's fair. I, I just think that the cool factor uh, is a little cooler. bit cooler. I definitely think it's cooler. I, I think that's enough to win me out. over. All right, next hypothetical. Although playing like co- being a stud free safety, like that's pretty fucking cool too. Uh, pick six. Like where you're yeah. fucking like like Sean Taylor, R.I.P. Dude, like if you're fucking a guy like him, where it's just like blowing people up and pick sixes and shit, like that would be pretty fucking sweet. And just being like the the best at your position, like just knowing that you're that good. Like, that that's just some it. lethal linebacker, just like blowing people. Like that would be fun. That'd be yeah. very fun. I I don't think there's a wrong answer in any of these. Uh, hypothetically, you are you've won a free car. You hit the hole in one at a at a golf outing, and you've won a free car, and you get to choose. Uh, let's say a sports car, a Corvette, uh, you know, whatever it, whatever tickles your fancy, Lamborghini, or like a big, sweet, brand new truck. What are you taking? I'm taking the car. I've yeah. driven a truck for Zach. You're like six life. four though. I understand that, but it's just so annoying to park it, and then like I just I just get tired of having to park a truck. See, and that's, um, it's also different for you in this one. You drive a truck every day. Yep. See, that's exactly it. I'm taking truck yeah. because I don't have one. I that's what I. That's I think that would be my only reason. It's, like, it's fun until like you get to like a Walmart or like the grocery store. And you're like, well, I gotta park far away because this thing is awful to park. Yeah, but like, you know how much shit I don't buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever because I don't have a truck to carry it home. True. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I have like a, I get like students ask me all the time, like, what's your dream car? I'm like, well, to be honest with you, it'd be like a Raptor, like something like that. That's got the, a little bit of pickup and is fun to drive, but is also a truck. So um, I, I'll say truck here, but also, like I said, it's cause I don't have one. Um, you're given a free vacation. Uh, you hit a hole in one on the next, uh, you know, famous hole or whatever the giveaway hole. Uh, you can either go to Europe or a Caribbean island. Which one are you going to? Island. The island. You guys were quick on that. I'm still. I've been thinking about this all day, and I. I feel like you're more of like a history guy, so maybe yeah. you want to go to Europe. But like, I love history. There's plenty of history on islands too. <laughs> There's also plenty of history on a beach with a, like a free drink and. That's my point. That's my There's point. also beaches in like Spain. I can read the book. That's on the beach. Fine. If you're give, if you're saying yeah, Spain, no, Port you're not. Spain, Portugal, I'm not book, Ibiza, whatever, <laughs> somewhere in that, somewhere in that neck of the nabe, fine. But then outside of that, it's Caribbean, like I, I London I for a Europe. gray, foggy afternoon, or like the Maldives, or not the Maldives. That's not the Caribbean, but five Turks and Caicos. <laughs> yeah, I, th that one's tough because I do love the beach. Like everybody always says, like I guess we could throw this in there. Everybody always says, uh, beach or mountains. Are we all on beach here? Or? Yes, for yeah. vacation. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. But it's not to hate on the mountains because I like vacations in the mountains too, especially in the summer. Yeah, underrated in the summer for sure. I'll be the contrarian though in the original question. I'll say Europe just because, like, I the history side of the dork in me wants to go. All right, we yeah. got two food questions here: uh, beef or chicken? Chicken. Beef. I think I'm gonna go beef as well. I just feel like beef I I, is I way I more pudo, versatile. But I've already said chicken. The, again, Street this trip, is kind of another one. Tender. No bad answer. No so, bad answer here. I, I just think there's a lot more versatility in beef. Steak. Yeah, you guys, steak. You guys can't come to Rips anymore. <laughs> we can't. We just have to order the hamburger. Do I don't know if they're the no, I don't know. I just completely the no, made the that no up. Prime no quarter, the no prime quarter for you, then, either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my wallet, my wallet, <laughs> how's that wallet, curveball? My wallet said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, last one. Uh, beer or liquor? I liquor. guess I'd almost say liquor because I drink liquor. so many high noons nowadays. That and you can, the quick hitter sometimes when you just need a quick punch. You get a little, you get it right to the veins that way. I, I yeah, like I like the having to drink like 20 beer, like bush lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's seven piss breaks before you like get a bus. You know? It's Especially much. like, because like I think all of our brains. When I said beer, like your first thought is Bush Light, Bud Light, Mill you know what I'm saying? Like that's like I hey, I that's do canceled like canceled now. Yeah, say that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but like I do like um like fruited sours and IPAs and stuff. But like still, like I definitely drink more like mixed drinks than like Bush Lights. Like I couldn't tell you the last time I had a Bush Light. So I love yeah, Bush I'm Light. Bush, Bush, I always, I can't I'll always Bush drink Light. a Bush Light, but. I don't know if uh, I Miller drink, Light. Like, I'll night. drink a Miller Light and Coors Light. Those are like oh, always been because like Bud Light. I threw. Oh well, yeah, because that's what they always have I on tap. And Bush Light, I've just never been able to get. I've just never been able to get on Bush Light. Really? So it's a, It's always been a Miller or Coors Light. Same for my like my dad. That's all he had growing up. An MGD. And uh, so it's like <laughs> yeah. a Miller household. Well, maybe you know I have I mean? no taste, but like, I I don't really see a difference in the taste of any of those beers. They're very similar. I like Budweiser. I, 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 I don't like Budweiser, 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 so maybe I'm wrong. So, like, I would always, like, whenever I go to, like, games that, like, had, like, uh, either Bud Light or Budweiser, I was always a Budweiser drinker at those. Because I just, I don't I wish like I Bud liked Budweiser because the, like, bottles look cool. I wish I liked Bud Light because it's fucking lighter. Like, you don't feel, like, Bud Heavies, man. Those things are nicknamed that for a reason. Those aluminum, uh, aluminum cans or whatever, those are good. They're very good. They stay cold. The, that's yeah. the best core. The best Coors Light you can get is the aluminum. The they aluminum bottle like Coors Light. The aluminum bottle Coors Light is like is money because those things get icy, ice cold. Nothing's better than the little Miller Lights. Yeah, how do we spiral spiral what do they call that? The grenades. And I still said liquor after that conversation. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, I just said it's like it's quicker and. Cleaner, tastes better. 
That is true. Let's jump into our next segment. We got a new team builder here in honor of our guy, Maddie, who's the biggest UFC fan I personally know. Uh, it feels like I almost feel a little thrown off that Maddie didn't have a UFC fight as his uh, floater this week. So we got a team builder this week. A couple weeks um, off from a pay-per-view. So, so. All right. Well, uh, it is you can only choose three fighting movies to watch for the rest of your life. Um, I'll be very honest. There's a couple on here that I have not seen. Uh, but I, I think I know my three. Does anybody else want to go first? Or? I'll go first. All right. All right, I'm going to go with The Fighter. That's a really good movie. Great movie. That's one of mine, too. Love it. Uh, Southpaw is my next one. He said, some of these I haven't seen. Yeah, I've never even heard of The Hurricane. Hurricane's good. Oh, Creed. I'll go Creed. I think That's Creed's really good movies. Hurricane's oh, got Denzel yeah. Washington. So, Zach, you got Southpaw, The Fighter, and Creed? Yep. Ah, I've never, I've never seen the Creed movies yet. They're very good, I think. That's what I've heard. Maddie, do you want to go or you want me to? Yeah, I'll go. I'll take uh do I get do I have to be limited to the ones on the <laughs> on the picture? No, you're... I, get, I want the karate kid, but I want the original, not the Jaden. Well, no, we'll give you we'll give you the original karate yeah, kid. Yeah, I want the original karate kid numero uno then. Um the I'm not going to take the fighter only because Zach did, but like the fighter on there is the best movie on that list, in my opinion. So I think that's good. The, the fighter's outstanding. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully pass on that, but I wanted to note that all around just, that's the best movie. There. Top to bottom, great movie. Um, I'm gonna say Bloodsport, oh. the entertainment factor, and then I'm gonna go with uh, I want Rocky, but I want Rocky Four to that as, as opposed to one. Yeah, we can, we'll give you that. We'll give you that. Um, I'll be honest. Have not seen any of the Karate Kids. Uh, what? And, the first one? What? No, never saw it. No, that, um, then that's, that's put crazy. that on your. You've seen so many movies. Put that on your your that. your board because you've got a baby at home playlist. Yeah, all three of them start with one, then go to two and three. Do it. Please. A lot of movies I feel like Boomy hasn't seen. There is a well. I mean, I think I've said this before. Like before the pandemic, I was not a movie guy at all, and I've I have now actually I should have tweeted this. Uh, as of like two weeks ago, I finally eclipsed 350 movies since the pandemic started. That's a very Dwight Schrute comment. Just so well, you know. Well, during COVID, this guy would be like at the I gym think, watching a I've movie. Wa I've watched 350 films since uh, March of 2020. But don't worry. A lot of them are like really dumb movies that I don't, I'm not super proud of that I've watched. So, um, but I'll go here. I'll, I'm going to be the meatball. I'm going to take Never Back Down. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, I illegally downloaded this movie off a of LimeWire and I put it on my iPod Classic and used to watch it every day in study hall. It's not a good movie. LimeWire, what a, what a sight. It's not a good movie, but I watched it probably every day for my whole senior year in study hall. Um, I will also take Bloodsport. I've recently, within the last probably six months, watched Bloodsport, and I love that movie. It's and again, it's not like the best like cinematic movie, but <laughs> my dumb Claude brain. Loves what more it. do you need? Yeah, I don't need to say a lot more. And then my last one, I'm really between two here. Oh. Uh, I'll take the original Rocky. I don't think it's as good as everybody says it is, but it's still a good movie. My other one would have been Southpaw. That was I love Very that movie. movie. Love. I'll be honest. Raging though. Bull. I, but I've yeah. heard great things. I've seen is parts of Cinderella Man. Redoing? I believe so. I think Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, they did it like yes. in the middle of an actual UFC event. Yeah. And one, no, none of us talked about Warrior. Is is a really solid movie too. I have seen that. Never seen it. If I if it's the one I remember, that's a pretty solid movie. That would have been no my, the Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal UFC one. I think is the new Roadhouse. Yep, that's right. I think I the Jake Gyllenhaal UFC that. one is the Ro is Roadhouse. I don't. I believe they are doing someone's doing Raging Bull though too. Zach. No, you're probably right. I just I thought because I heard the name, it <laughs> sounded like it. Well, let us know what movies were not on this right, uh, sure. that we. That we didn't include uh let's go ahead and wrap things up we've got the tcf not top three the last episode we did was the top three <sighs> sports cities this is the not top three so it's the worst sports cities in america can i uh go ahead and go first i'm gonna just take it philadelphia oh philadelphia Sorry. i'll go no, back. I, I, 
There's another one that you're gonna that somebody's gonna say before it gets back to me. Uh, I hate Philadelphia more than this other place. I got called uh, some names that you can't say on a podcast when I was 11 years old uh, because I wore a Sammy Sosa jersey to a middle of July Phillies Cubs game uh, and a grown man should have known better. Should have known well, better. I, I hope every I hope Philly continues to have regular season success and just lose Were you everything. Were the kid that got vomited on? Oh. Uh, no, but I did get a beer spilled, like not full beer, but like it got trickled down my back, if I remember correctly. That was a beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hate that <laughs> oh, city. I, I like the city; it's a fun, like historical city. But like, outside their sports, their fans, they all suck. It's they threw right. batteries at Santa Claus. I hope. Nothing good happens for Philadelphia fans absolute, ever. Absolute pit. Go for it, Zach. You're up. St. Louis. You fucker. <laughs> yes. The football team left. Uh, so did their basketball the team. team. They had a the basketball, basketball team? Uh, well, they were in the ABA. They were part of the – they were the St. Louis Flyers. They fell apart when the in the merger. I just don't like the Cardinals or the St. Louis Blues, so. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good pick. That would have been if I wasn't very passionate about hating Philadelphia sports fans. I Man, would have... you get two, right? Yeah, yes, I guess. Um, Detroit. Yeah, I don't like Detroit. I think their fans. Well, I don't hate. I used to hate their fans a lot more because I had big problems when I was in college because that was during like the Pistons era of uh, like Ben Wallace, Rasheed Hamilton, uh, Rasheed Wallace, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Billups. So their fans were very annoying then. Um, because I was at school in Michigan, so like all my friends were Pistons fans. So I have a a deep hatred towards Detroit fans for that, and then the Pistons bad boy era growing up. So that that's why I'm so strongly against Detroit. I don't think it's horrible sports city though, in terms of their support for their teams. I just don't like them basically. So I want to make that clear. Um, and it's a dumb. Yeah, uh, two. I wish I could take like a suburb of St. Louis just to reiterate how fucking much St. <laughs> Louis sucks. Um, East so St. Louis with... is off the board. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, I'm gonna take. I'll just go with Miami. It's like they get like yeah. six fans when they have, like won titles and stuff, and people show up to, like at halftime of games. So it's no, it's notoriously bad from that regard. So I'll actually take uh, one city that's bad for fans to tag along with Detroit, who's just bad in general. Yeah, those are really good picks. I'm gonna go with the mixture because they're in the same state, Milwaukee and Green Bay. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, yeah. that's fine. You can get those two together. Yeah, those that's, just, that's one pick there. Just it's like until the mid nineties. It's like the left armpit and the right armpit, and then they just you know, <laughs> you're right there. You're good. Yeah, no. not too not 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 too bad for as small markets as they are. I'll, I'll give them a little bit there. Um, I'm giving them nothing. nothing. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I'm, I would win this draft because in the second round, I'm getting Boston. I hate Boston sports fans. They suck. They're entitled to everything. They, oh, they won a lot. <laughs> I don't care. They suck. And then they have one year where they're down, and it's all like, oh, you don't know how hard it is for Bo – like, shut up. I hate them all. I hate the Celtics. I hate the yeah. Patriots. Kind of like going from Kane to Bedard. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, but that's one sport. They're they're entitled. <laughs> no, I got you. They're entitled. Just and I'm just not crazy about the East Coast. Period. So screw Boston. You got an um, East Coast bias. It sounds like the opposite of an East Co an East Coast hatred. I think would be the yeah, better there word. You go. It's, it's, uh, uh, my out. my final pick. That this is a tough one. Um. I'll go. I know that I'm all over the board here, but Los Angeles, kind of the same vein as yeah, Matt, with cool like the, the fan. Yeah. And, and like the, the problem is they're all sitting in traffic because if you've ever driven through LA, it, it's the absolute worst. So they're all sitting in traffic. No one goes to the games. And it feels like that's like the most transient city for um, like organizations leaving, right? They had the Rams, they had the Raiders, they've moved, they've all, you know, different teams have come back, but like there's so many teams that have been in and out of that. And then Los Angeles, Angels of Anaheim, all that nonsense. There's just, they're never there. They're, they're, they always seem to like lack an identity. So I'll take LA in the third round. I feel pretty good about that. I'm going to go with Cleveland. Good what on. did um, uh, Joel Kim always say? No one, no one's yes. got a vacation in Cleveland. You guys like it here? Yeah. That's a, that's a good pick. That's a good third round pick. I like that. They didn't care about basketball until they got LeBron James, like the one of the greatest players of all time. 
and kind and of in the same vein. <laughs> and in like the same vein as Maddie's, like Cleveland kind of sucks, like as a town. Like oh, it's man. not as bad as Detroit, but on a clear day, you know, you can see Detroit. There's okay. I don't know how this landed in the third round for me, but there's no city's fans that thinks more highly of themselves. And they really just like over the years, they've had one team that's ever won anything traditionally, like repeatedly historically. But outside of that, they've been like a laughing stock in basically every other major sport. And that's fucking New York. Oh, and that city, yeah. their fans, dude. All of their fans always think they're so damn good. Like the Bing Bong, like you and guys are Kane, God and then they God. lost in the first round. Yeah, you lost the, the first round with Patrick Kane or Temi Panarin, fucking, uh, you know, Tarasenko. All they reloaded with all those guys to, to pair along with Condre Miller and Adam Fox. The Mets this sweep the Rangers Cubs and still can't win the, the World Series. Round. The Mets, the Mets are a joke. They've got like a four hundred million dollar payroll and they're under five hundred. Like what is, like the Yankees aren't very good anymore. You know, like New Jersey, they get the Devils, so I'm not even going to give New York them. So, sorry, you, you don't get you don't get the Devils, but uh, yeah, it's just like it's the Knicks were no, fun there's, to watch, but there's no city that's got like a a more inflated false sense of like superiority when it comes to sports than New York. Well, just watch them win like two or three games in the playoffs, and the Knicks fans are just going crazy. The Jets, yeah. I mean, the fucking Jets. The Giants have obviously had some success over the years, but. You know, but then, like, even that, the Giants are so feast or famine. They either win the Super Bowl yeah. or they're one of the worst teams in the NFL. Yeah, you're right. So it's like, I mean, I'd rather, have, I'd rather have that than not. But. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't Those know. Just very, they, you're right. And both of them were against the Patriots, too. They were random yeah, Super just, Bowls. They're so out of nowhere. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, and the Yankees really haven't done shit since, like, you know, they won one oh, since. They've won one since, what was it, nine year 2000? Was there, you know, at the last of their. They're four in a row or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then their last they one won, was, what, 2009 or 10? Yeah, because they won 96, 97. Yeah. Or no, the Marlins won 97. So they won, like, 96, 98, 99 or something like that. Or 99, yeah. 2000. That's a good one. Yeah. It's a Let big area, know, too. New York. New York stinks. <laughs> Let us know which uh, cities we missed, which ones you agree with us on. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at typical underscore Chicago, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, check, just type in typical Chicago fans. Give those pages a like. Um, make sure that you head over to YouTube for all of our content in video form. We greatly appreciate you guys joining us for episode 161. Make sure you check out our sponsor, Connect Roasters Coffee on Twitter at Connect Roasters or ConnectRoasters.com. Wherever you get your podcast, we are also there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, review, leave a five-star rating if you can. You can follow me on Twitter at BoomyTCF. We got Zach at TCF, and of course, Maddie at schools underscore zero one thank you for joining us that was episode 161 of typical chicago fans we love you all peace